we move to the second talk, uh, which is called uh, Shuffle Argument Secure in the de Generic Model by Prasudi Fauze, Elgar Lipma, and uh, Michel Zayach. And uh, Michel is giving the talk. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, let me talk about uh, our, uh, our result, uh, Shuffle Argument Secure in the, in the Generic Bilinear Group Model. Um, so what we achieved basically is a new efficient CRS-based non-interactive uh, zero-knowledge shuffle argument. And this argument is over four times more efficient in verification than uh, previous work. And here uh, we argue that the verification time is much more important uh, than uh, uh, pro proof time. Uh, it's because uh, you usually in the non-interactive zero-knowledge setting, you usually prove once something, and then you probably need to verify uh, many times or by many, many uh, participants. Mm. And our soundness proof holds in a generic bilinear group model. Now this is uh, quite compli complicated. Um, uh, the proof is quite complicated as uh, maybe there's no high math in here, in here but uh, uh, the level of complication comes from the huge number of, of polynomial equations. Uh, so we used the comp computer algebra system uh, to, to, to solve it. Uh, as we especially we needed to go through, through Grubner basis. Um, so let me talk about motivation for, uh, for uh, shuffle arguments. One of the motivation is e-voting. In the e-voting, we have a uh, voter, say Bob. Bob uh, wants to, to vote in uh, some kind of elections. So he uses his computer to send his vote to some server. And then the server, uh, server counts the votes, and everything is perfect. But uh, as uh, history tells us, it uh, it's no voters who count, but who counts the votes, right? Um, so Mixnet uh, give us two properties, anonymity and correctness. Um, correctness comes from the fact that data is public, and anonymity comes from the fact that data and source of the data is private. OK, so uh, simple, simple Mixnet. We have a uh, few few voters. Uh, voters uh, send uh, encrypted uh, encrypted vote to a to a mix server. A mix server then uh, gets some uh, random permutation along with randomness r, and what the mix server uh, does is uh, he gets uh, input ciphertext uh, permuted using permutation pi and re-randomize it, uh, re randomize them using randomness, uh, randomness r. Then, uh, uh, then the server sends it uh, further to another uh, mixnet server, uh, say mix server, and uh, the next server uh, does uh, exactly the same, but uh, of course uh, uh, it chooses uh, permutation phi and randomness uh, at his own. Mm. Then everything uh, goes to, to the, some uh, decrypting machine that knows secret key, and this machine publish, uh, publishes um, plain text. Of course, we can have uh, much more uh, mixed servers here. Um, the security assumption here is that uh, if at least one, um, one server is, is, uh, is honest, then uh, then the security holds, then the data is private, uh, and then it's correct. OK, so, so this setting give, gives us uh, privacy um, against each individual server. Because uh, if this server is honest, uh, the, the next server knows nothing about uh, which ciphertext comes from uh, which user, right? But, uh, okay, wh what if a uh, server cheats? Um, so here we cannot do nothing in, in this setting. So we need to, to change it a little. Um, 
we give uh, every uh, mix server additional public key and we demand that uh, every server proves um, that uh, he has done this uh, work, uh, this shuffling work correctly, so that he honestly output uh, permutation of ciphertext. It means that uh, in, in fact uh, this D here are re-randomized uh, ciphertext C. Mm. Yeah, and, and send uh, this uh, proof uh, with, uh, with uh, sense proof with new ciphertext uh, to the to the next next mix server. Um, the next mix server verifies uh, the all previous um, prof proofs, shuffle um, shuffle ciphertext and uh, sends uh, them on. And uh, in the end, uh, the crypting machine verify all proofs. Okay? So here we see that uh, the verification time is, uh, is more important because uh, every server proofs once, but uh, it verifies all, um, all the proofs from the servers that were uh, in this uh, line uh, before him. So in this setting we have both anonymity and correctness. Okay, um, so shuffle argument, um, we, we, we give efficient zero knowledge argument of correctness of shuffling. Uh, as I said, the mix server permutes ciphertext, re-encrypt then, and provides a proof that it was done correctly. Uh, and, but the problem is that in the CRS model, existing uh, arguments were not very efficient. Here we have a small comparison. Um, in this paper, we achieved much better uh, CRS length, and it matters uh, because this N here is a number of ciphertexts. So in a national election, for example, it can be like 10 millions, 20 millions, or, or more. Um, in communication, uh, we, are, we do much better, and uh, here, uh, compared to Fauci Litma uh, paper, we do a little bit worse in terms of, uh, of, uh, of pro provers time, but uh, on the other hand, we are much better on in this uh, in verification phase. Furthermore, uh, we, we, we achieve full soundness and uh, we work in the full uh, generic billionaire group model. Um, usually in uh, shuffle is a quite, uh, it's a quite, shuffle argument is quite complicated. So usually um, known assumptions about bilinear groups uh, are not enough. They, they don't fit well um, because they are like, um, they're usually quite simple and they don't, uh, don't give us the, the all properties we needed. So, so it, up to now, it was usually the case that uh, uh, that the shuffle arguments use some quite new uh, billionaire uh, pairings um, assumptions or uh, even introduced, introduced a new one. So um, we get uh, rid of this, uh, of this assumption in some sort, some sort of way. Okay, so I think uh, this slide uh, appeared uh, a few times already on, the, on this conference, but let me remind you what is uh, zero knowledge in a CRS model. So uh, we have a trusted third party that produces uh, CRS, uh, common reference string. We have a prover here and verifier here. Uh, so the trusted third party uh, sends the CRS to, to both parties. Um, prover knows uh, uh, prover knows uh, some instance of problem along with uh, witness, while uh, verifier knows only uh, the instance of, uh, of a problem. Uh, and then prover sends a proof pi that in fact uh, x uh, belongs to, to some language L. He proves that, uh, that he knows uh, witness W. 
and then verifier accepts or, or rejects. Of course, uh, as in every uh, zero knowledge setting, we need simulator. In the CRS setting, simulator is, uh, um, is given uh, some additional uh, power called trapdoor. And the simulator, who, who knows trapdoor but uh, doesn't know witness, proves that simulates the proof that uh, X uh, belongs to, to the language. Okay. So basically we have three properties of every zero knowledge argument is correctness. Uh, that means that the verifier accepts if, uh, if the proof is correct. Soundness, that means that it's hard for a malicious prover to make verifier accept if uh, if X uh, doesn't belong to language and zero knowledge and zero knowledge is defined by uh, this simulator. Okay, so uh, let me tell you something about bilinear pairings. Bilinear pairings, uh, so we have three groups of the same order. We denote them by G1, G2, GT. Uh, we know generators of these groups and we have bilinear map. It's a function from G1 uh, product G2 to GT. And the requirements are that uh, they are efficiently compatible, uh, non-generate, uh, non and uh, of course bilinear. Okay. Mm. And there are some assumptions about pairing is, uh, the very basic assumption is that inverting pairing should be hard. So given uh, pairing on uh, A and B, it's hard to compute either A or, or B. So uh, this is like equivalent to, to discrete log. Given G to the A, it's hard to compute A. Mm. But what else should be hard? It's not, not enough. Um, so in a, in, a shuffle, in a shuffle world, it usually looks like this. We have some protocol. Then we have a bunch of, of assumptions on billionaire pairings. There are hundreds of them, and many of them introduced uh, in the last, uh, last few years. Uh, but, but as I said, the shuffle argument is a quite complicated argument. So to make, uh, mm, to make protocol efficient, we usually needed to introduce some bunch of new assumptions. And uh, how to verify these assumptions? No, us usually we verify them in a generic model. So it's like a minimal requirement for an assumption to hold in a generic model. Okay, so this setting is not bad if, uh, if uh, the, the, these assumptions are, are well known and uh, well, uh, well justified um, uh, or uh, if, the, if we don't introduce uh, many new assumptions. But, uh, but in fact, uh, here, we need to, to make our, you know, to bend our protocol to make it fit to, to these assumptions. So it comes with, uh, with a loss in, in efficiency. So what we use in this work is a pure generic model. So we were able to simplify this, uh, this picture to this, okay? So we know that the um, generic group model is, holds only for res some restricted adversaries. Uh, but on the other hand, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very efficient. Mm, okay, so in a generic bilinear group model, we have this assumption that uh, this uh, adversary has only re restricted access to, to, to group, uh, group elements. Like, uh, he, he knows group operation, bilinear map, and can do equality tests. And uh, if he wants to compute uh, some element in G, he needs to know two elements in this group that gives him this, this element. So, uh, so basically, if there is an element in a group, in a bilinear group model, then we know the discrete log of the polynomial that, uh, that creates uh, that creates this element. Uh, and uh, 
Well, in general, in a generic bilinear group model, um, we use GT as a generic group. Here we use in something called semi uh, generic bilinear group model because we don't don't handle GT as a generic group, and this comes from the fact that a lot of uh, bilinear pairings uh, has this group GT as uh, as some finite field, so it's. Uh, hard to, to restrict uh, access to elements of, of finite field. Okay, so how soundness in uh, GBGM looks like? So um, trusted third party chooses some number of uh, random, random variables and produces CRS. CRS, uh, is, uh, CRS is a set of uh, of polynomials on on these uh, variables, and everything is given in in exponent. Okay. Mm. Then adversary uh, adversary can get uh, elements from the CRS and make any uh, linear combination of it. Mm. And th then what we do is we do some uh, quadratic, uh, quadratic test. We use bilinear maps and uh, we check whether, whether uh, our verification equation holds. So we need to, to make sure that uh, every verification equation uh, is zero. Um, so, uh, so in general, uh, Adversary chooses uh, chooses coefficients h i a, uh, and then we check uh, this set of set of set of equations. And we need to show that the solution we get, the only solution we get, is somehow nice, and that means that uh, adversary cannot deviate from from the protocol. Mm. So uh, when we construct that argument, we need to decompose it to the smaller, smaller building blocks. Um, we decompose it to the sub-arguments, uh, and we demand that every sub-argument is uh, efficiently verifiable. Uh, so we make sure that every, every sub-argument is sound independently, and then, uh, of course, it may be the case that we need some CRS elements to, to prove soundness of, uh, of one argument and the CRS used in, uh, in every argument separately uh, is not the same CRS. So we need to, to compose all the CRSs into one big CRS. But then if uh, we add element to CRS, uh, adversary, adversary becomes mo more powerful, right? Uh, so we need to check again uh, whether this uh, protocol protocol is sound. And I if it's not sound, we usually uh, uh, add a new random variable uh, that will be used only in this, in this sub-argument. Mm. Okay, so our sub-argument uh, goes as follows. We start with a permutation matrix argument, and in this argument, uh, prover commits to some some ver some uh, permutation and proves that uh, he committed to it uh, correctly. Then uh, there comes consistency argument, uh, where prov uh, prover uh, proves that he used the same permutation as he committed to to shuffle ciphertext and validity argument, where prover gives uh, proof that uh, ciphertext uh, is uh, are, are formed correctly. Uh, so correctly means that uh, the soundness proof holds. So uh, in fact, uh, he cannot a little uh, like deviate, but uh, but altogether we make sure that uh, that uh, that he he doesn't. Okay, so let's focus on the permutation matrix argument. Um, so what's uh, permutation magic? I think it's clear. Um, so we use two sub-arguments in this sub-argument. First, that the matrix is stochastic, so the rams, uh, rows sum to, to 1. 
one vector. And uh, then uh, each row is, is one sparse, at least that uh, uh, at, at, uh, at most one coefficient is, is, is non-zero. Okay, so one sparsity argument looks uh, as follows. Um, prover commits uh, to elements in a, it's, a, it's basically it's a Pedersen commitment, but in, in exponent in this notation. Mm. Then comes argument from the square span programs. Uh, proofs, uh, proofs looks uh, as follows. Uh, and verification equation is uh, just a quadratic equation that uses this AIs, some elements from, uh, from CRS, okay? Um, uses the proof uh, given by a prover and then checks whether this, uh, this equation equals zero. But, uh, of course, uh, adversary can, uh, can deviate from the, from the protocol. So, here's the form of AI given by an honest prover. Uh, but, uh, in fact, adversary can produce AI in a very different way, right? Uh, so, as I said, he can get coefficients uh, next to the every... Uh, every element from CRS uh, as he wishes to. Uh, so he can produce his own AI in a very uh, sophisticated way. Uh, the same comes with A2 and of course he is not restricted to the, to the previous uh, way of uh, getting pi. He can uh, uh, as previously get every linear combination of, of CRS elements elements uh, he wishes. Okay. But still, uh, the verification equation is uh, out of his hand. Uh, it, the verification equation is like given in a system and it's checked by a verifier. So it's still, uh, it's still the case that this verification equation holds. Okay. And as I said, uh, the idea of the proof is to make sure that uh, here, let's say here, the adversary can, cannot come up with uh, something different than honest prover, okay? Okay, so how solving system of polynomial equation looks like? Um, so we need to find coefficients such that uh, this verification equation holds. Uh, and we, we begins with uh, noticing that Next to the every uh, every such uh, variable built from the product of variables, it uh, it is uh, randomly uh, it's linearly independent. So we we can focus on uh, on coefficients next to the such tuples. Okay, so th we know that if uh, if the whole if the whole uh, verification equation is to be zero, then and then every coefficient next to the uh, such tuple needs to, to, be, to be zero also. Mm. This is, so this gives us a system of polynomial equations and it's, the system is huge. I, I mean, maybe 20 polynomial equations is not huge, but uh, let me remind you that we are talking about sub-arguments of sub-arguments. So altogether we, we have a lot of uh, polynomial equations. So that's why we use uh, computer um, algebra system. So this is an exemplary, uh, uh, exemplary uh, system of equations. And here comes the solving. So we, we mix um, computer algebra system with manual labor. Uh, that, that, but that is probably we, uh, we are not so good in, in coding. Maybe we maybe we uh, can get everything from, from this uh, CAS system. Um, and uh, we use uh, linear independence of, of polynomials given in uh, CRS to, to split some coefficients to make, uh, to get more, more and more uh, uh, equations, uh, but simpler ones. Uh, we compute uh, Grubner basis and then solve, uh, solve the Grubner basis, and uh, this can be, of course, done manually, but we use the computer algebra system. 
and we finally we obtain that uh, this uh, AI is in fact as in uh, as honest prover would 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 produce. Okay, thank you very much. We have time for one quick question. In terms of communication or? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, let me begin with, uh, with uh, the fact that the Bayer Graph uh, is, is very nice protocol, but it's uh, interactive. Uh, in, in terms of communication, well, uh, we, we uh, I'm, not sh I'm not sure how we compare to Bayer Graph in uh, terms of uh, of communication, I'm trying to go back to the to the table, uh, but communication is uh, uh, well. There is uh, some problems with communication because in in every case of shuffle arguments, you need to send uh, over the web like uh, millions of ciphertexts, right? So so basically, uh, the order of uh, of magnitude is still uh, still pretty bad. There's still a lot of uh, stuff to, to we need to send. So we we didn't focus it uh, very very uh, very much. Uh, oh, well, I I think I <laughs> I skipped it. Okay. So uh, where is it? <laughs> well. Uh, Communication seven and uh, plus three. So, uh, mm, I don't recall now how this is, this looks like in the buyer growth settings. Oh, oh, right, right. Because they they don't use uh, right. They they have sublinear stuff. Yes, uh, yes. So so we we do do worse, uh, much worse here. Right. Okay, let's thank uh, Michel again.